Good evening. It is Monday, September 9th, 2019, and I would like to call the City of Burnsville Planning Commission to order. Uh, we have a lengthy agenda tonight. Uh, it's 6.30, by the way. We're starting right on time. And uh, to start with, I'd like to uh, have a motion to adopt the agenda. But first, let's go to staff. Do you have any changes to the agenda? No changes from staff. Any commissioners, any changes? No. Okay. Do I have a motion? Uh, I move to adopt. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, the next item is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting, the August 26, 2019 meeting. Staff, do you have any changes? No changes from staff. And any from the commission? No. I move to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, so that brings us to um, our first item of action and that is a public hearing for irate properties for conditional use permit for multiple buildings on one lot and landscaping design and a variance to the building and parking setback and exterior lighting standards for construction of a new clubhouse located at 2001 121st Street East and Ms. Arnold thank you uh, good evening planning commissioners uh, so this application before you is for multiple requests to accommodate the construction of this new clubhouse for the Colonial Villas apartments, which are near the intersection of County Road 11 and 122nd. Uh, so the subject site is zoned R3B, high density residential, and it's guided high density residential in the comprehensive plan. It is adjacent to some single family homes to the east and uh, from, from other multifamily developments and some business developments to the north, south, and west. Uh, the development is made up of six separate apartment buildings, each on their own parcel. So shown here, very busy, but is the Alta survey of the properties. So there are six residential lots, which the, um, were in the subdivision as it was originally platted in 1968. Uh, the site was designed to be served and accessed by 121st Street. Uh, which is was vacated later in the 80s. Um, the buildings were approved as building permits by the City Council um, in 1968 and 1971, and then the vacated 121st Street still does hold the utilities which serve the area, uh, so there's a 60-foot wide uh, utility easement uh, in the formerly 121st. So the requests as part of this application a CUP request for multiple buildings on one lot, as the proposed clubhouse will be a second built structure on lot two of block two of Connolly Estates. Um, the CUP request for landscaping design, a variance request for a 32 foot primary structure front yard setback, and variance request for a zero foot parking setback, and the variance request for exterior lighting standards for foot candles at the property line. Um, so this proposal, it's a 4,060 square foot clubhouse um, to hold their leasing office as well. Uh, this space will hold some social space, office areas, a fitness room, um, package pickup area, as well as some outdoor patio for some recreational space for residents. So there are 17 existing parking spaces on site and the proposal will rework the parking area. Um, since there's no structure here now, um, some of this is parking on the vacated street um, and it runs parallel through this uh, circle area. Uh, so it will be reoriented over in this direction where the pool for the apartment complex is. So a zero foot setback is requested at the property line, which runs directly mm -hmm. through the vacated street. Um, this is an existing condition as it's a vacated street it's our, that's already used for some parallel parking, um, but they will also be reorienting the parking area, as I said. Um, so the parking lot design is an upgrade to the aesthetics of this inner courtyard area. Um, after the street was vacated, um, it has been used as access to the site. A cross access and cross parking agreement was never provided uh, for the development after the vacation of the street, even though the utility easement was. Uh, so there is a condition that uh, one of these agreements be filed with the county showing that the properties in the development have shared access um, on this vacated street, which is, a, is now a drive aisle. Um, so on your screen are the building elevations for the proposal. Uh, building materials proposed meet architectural material standards of the <coughs> ordinance and exceed them in some cases. Materials are also 
um, on a sample board, which I did not bring with me. I apologize. Um, but the, the color shown in the PowerPoint are very similar to uh, the material board. Um, the roof is illustrated as metal flashing with an angled roof line. At the top of the roof line, it will be 22 feet, and at the bottom, it will be about 13 feet. Uh, the clubhouse is proposed in some natural wood colors. Um, materials proposed will be an upgrade to the aesthetics on the site, and the applicant has indicated that in the future, um, the existing apartment buildings will be um, upgraded on their facades as well to be more compatible with the proposed materials for this new clubhouse. Um, the proposed landscaping plan uh, indicates that six trees will be removed. Um, these are here to incorporate some of this uh, dry aisle expansion and where the building will be located. Uh, but 11 existing trees will remain uh, mostly in the southern and northern portion of these large parcels that the apartment buildings are on. Um, the landscape plan does not meet the number of trees per open area square footage on either of the two lots when they're calculated per lot. Uh, the request for the conditional use permit for landscaping design, the applicant is indicating that when calculated per the square foot of the improved and impacted area of the development, that the application does meet landscaping requirements. Um, landscaping within the parking area exceeds ordinance requirements at about 9% compared to 3%. Uh, within the improvement area, the plan meets the 25% diversity requirement and exceeds uh, the building perimeter landscaping requirement. Um, overall, landscaping requirements in R3B are 50% uh, for the whole landscaped or open area. Uh, in this case, it is calculated at close to 47% for the development as a whole. The vacated street um, from the uh, 121st, as well as some of this like recreational area, that's not calculated as part of a landscaped or um, open area, but it can affect that calculation. The intent of the ordinance is for newly developed areas to be landscaped and maintain the existing landscaping on the lots is an existing condition of the originally approved building permits from the 60s and 70s. The updated area does meet city landscaping requirements, so staff is supportive of the CUP for landscaping design. The exterior lighting standards uh, variance request is related to the requirement that the foot candle um, the output at the property line of residentially zoned lots not exceed uh, 0.5 foot candles. Um, so the property line goes through the center of the vacated street, and this may be uh, challenging to see, but the photometric plans do show a range between about 2 and 3.7 foot candles. Um, however, this lighting is related to parking lot lighting within the expanded parking area for the proposed clubhouse. Uh, the lots between the apartment buildings do share a common owner, um, and no new lighting is proposed near shared property lines uh, with outside uh, neighboring property owners. Um, exterior lighting will still need to be downcast and shielded on faces, all faces, that's an ordinance requirement. And um, so as mentioned earlier, the parking lot setback request reflects the existing maintained zero foot parking setback for the drive aisle and new parking spaces. Uh, the, for the other variance requests, the building setback yeah, request is to the front property line. Um, so these lots were platted as a double frontage lot. Um, with the vacated street, um, there are still platted property lines at the front on either side. So um, the 40-foot required setback, they're requesting 32 feet of a setback length. Uh, this, um, so that would be an 8-foot request. Um, so this slide shows the grading, drainage, and erosion control plan. Um, the applicant will be providing a new stormwater pond here north of the new parking area. Um, we can answer questions about that uh, later if necessary. Um, on the utility plan here, you can see some of the utility lines that do run underneath the vacated street uh, within that 60-foot easement that was maintained over the vacated street. So they serve the site in the neighborhood to the east. Uh, the parking and geometric plan shows the new surface parking area and some of the existing parking and drive aisle, which will be resurfaced and updated after the construction of the proposed clubhouse. <coughs> um, come back to civil plans um, if necessary. Uh, so as you've heard this evening, the CUP request is for two items, the multiple buildings on one lot and for landscaping design. Uh, the apartment development was originally approved as one building per lot at the time of permit. So the inclusion of a clubhouse on a lot with an apartment building already located on it uh, does require the CUP request for multiple buildings. 
The landscaping ordinance does allow for alternative landscape plans to be considered by CUP to evaluate compatibility with the intent of the ordinance. Uh, the existing landscaping on site is as approved many decades ago. Uh, the impacted area by the construction of the clubhouse does show a landscaping design that meets the ordinance and in some areas exceeds ordinance standards, while the two parcels affected by the construction and the development as a whole uh, do not meet current ordinance standards. The intent of the landscaping ordinance can be met by improving the design of the redeveloped portion of the site and the lots. The variance requests are for three provisions, so the building setback, the parking setback, and exterior lighting standards. Uh, the variance request is caused by the factor that each building in the apartment development is on its own lot rather than one large lot with multiple buildings on it. Uh, the existing property lines from the six subdivision plat do affect setbacks and exterior lighting standards, um, but they are, all these lots are owned in common by the same property owner and um, historically how that has been the case when they are all sold, they are all sold together. Uh, when evaluated with the variance guideline policy, there are 11 positives and four negatives as included in your background packet and the proposal is reasonable. Um, <clears throat> some engineering related improvements to the site are the additional bituminous parking areas, some storm sewer and utility improvements, uh, the stormwater management accommodated on site by that uh, stormwater pond, a general uh, NPDES construction permit would be required, and the engineering department has indicated that these uh, two conditions uh, be added, that the outstanding engineering memo comments be addressed adequately, and that a low impact development uh, management, practice, management practices agreement executed uh, for the uh, property and development. Uh, police, fire, and building have reviewed the application. There's no outstanding comments. Um, the CUP and the variance request do reflect a unique situation of the each building being on its own lot rather than one uh, large parcel for development. The proposed improvements are consistent with the R3B high density residential district. Uh, so staff is recommending approval subject to the following conditions. Um, and there is a small mistype in this, which should be reflected here. So as presented, a properly drawn legal instrument executed by the parties concerned for joint use of um, or for use of the off-street parking facilities shall be filed as a deed restriction on the properties in the recorder's office of Dakota County. Uh, lighting shall be downcast and shielded on all faces. Uh, that all outstanding city engineering memo comments be addressed adequately and the low impact development uh, executed and recorded prior to issuance of building permit. Um, so this item will be a public hearing and then a representative from the applicant team can answer some specific questions about the proposal if necessary. Otherwise, I'm available for comment as well. well good. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Um, do we have some comments? Commissioner John. Yeah, uh, so there's a 40-foot variance uh, per code. What's the reason behind the 40-foot variance? Or f the 40-foot that they're going to 32 or the 8-foot? Okay, so the 40-foot setback, setback would me. be required, um, on, is required in that zoning district from the front or the rear lot line. And in this case, uh, it was platted as the front here to front 121st Street. Um, so that's an ordinance requirement of 40 feet, and they're requesting the 32 feet so that they could uh, fit the building in uh, in this proposed location. What's the reason for the setback? Why is there a setback in the code? Do you know, or is it? Um, so setbacks are created um, as as often it's aesthetics or safety that it's for further back from a road. Okay. So this being a private road, really, it really doesn't matter, correct? Um, well, in this case, it's from the property line because this is still considered the front property line after being vacated. Right. Um, so it's from lines and not necessarily where a road is, from okay. lot lines. I don't know if that helps. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can understand a little confusion on this. This is We're kind of trying to fit something into an odd mm -hmm. property, and I'm curious um, if replatting is possible here to kind of do away with some of the creativity that's needed or if that's something that was considered or maybe down the road? Um, so um, it would be possible for the applicant to do that. Um, they've indicated it's not something they're interested in doing with the lots that they own. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? 
Any questions or comments for the applicant? Would the applicant, is the applicant here? Yes? Yes, yes. Would you like to make any comments? Um, yeah, if you'd come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening. My name is Jeff Gears, and I'm with BDH Young. I'm the project architect on the project. Um, so I think the uh, uh, and Peter is uh, here tonight. He's the uh, he's the uh, client. Um, I think the biggest challenge was we were just trying to find the um, best way to fit this amenity onto the site. And uh, as as mentioned, you know the the building owner or the property owner didn't have the interest of combining these lots. And so that's part of the reason that we're asking for the variance in the, in the uh, CUP. So if this were to be sold to another uh, owner down the road, the clubhouse would go with the south property, correct? Correct. Okay. And Commissioner Roberts? Um, I would think the... Um People living in the buildings are pretty excited about this. I would speculate, yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I looked at it as being a very big plus. Mm -hmm. And you guys are dealing with quite the unique property to try to fit something like that in. So, actually, I thought the way it was managed out, I thought it was pretty good. If we're only looking at an eight foot mm -hmm. variance, that isn't that bad for what you had to work with. Correct. Put it that way. Commissioner Awad. Yeah, I just wanted to echo it's a it's a pretty nice solution. So I think I think it, it'll be a huge improvement, especially for a property of that age. You know, this is uh, um, it'd be nice to see this go up. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Jack. Oh, I was going to say I was really excited about seeing the property get this amendment. So I, I agree. It sounds like a great deal. Great. Thank you so much. Hold on. One more. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you may or may not know this, but um, is there a timeline of when the other buildings are going to be upgraded? Because this building is going to make everything else look so different. You know, um, I would say, yes, uh, my understanding is that the um, property owners would like to make improvements. I can't speak on the specific okay. timeline on that, but. Yeah, it's not a prerequisite or anything. I'm just Correct. curious, yeah, because it looks like the whole complex then is just going to upgrade. That's the intent, nice. correct? Good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is a public hearing, and I would like to open the public hearing at 647. Is there anybody that would like to speak to this item? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing at 648. And commissioners, we have a decision to make. We have some discussion. Um, do you have any comments, concerns? Would anybody like to make a motion? Commissioner John. I will make a motion that uh, we recommend to City Council approval of the conditional use permit for multiple buildings on one lot and landscape and design and variance to the building and parking setback and exterior lighting standards for construction of the new clubhouse located at 2001. 121st Street East, subject to the following conditions, uh, four conditions that were previously listed on the slide. I second that. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Uh, I agree with some of the comments that were made, so... Um, Thank you for bringing this to us. I, I hope that the uh, the other buildings get the same type of facade and, and look in the future. I think that would be great for the, the complex there. So. Yes, that is the intent. Thank you. All right, so that will bring us to our next item, which is a public hearing uh, for the application of Cooper Johnson for a planned unit development amendment for a tavern microbrewery to be located at 12257 Nicollet Avenue South. And I believe still, me. still you, you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this item is related to an office warehouse building and existing plan unit development uh, north of part of the city in Highway 13 and um, adjacent to the Burnsville Transit Station, uh, which is here. 
and the parking ramp, um, and south of Nicolet Avenue. So the proposal is for a microbrewery or a brew pub, which is encompassed within the tavern definition within our zoning ordinance. Uh, so the subject site is zoned B3 general business with a planned unit development for office and office warehouse. The site is guided business retail office in the 2040 comprehensive plan. The existing planned unit development was a stage development of multiple office and warehouse buildings, uh, this particular stage in the Nicollet Business Center. Um, so a tavern, uh, as defined in the zoning ordinance, is a conditional use in the B3 zoning district. Um, as the property is an existing planning and development for a combination district of uh, conditional uses in B3 and, and uh, permitted uses in I-1 to create that office warehouse uh, feel. Um, the applicant is also requesting some deviations to the city code. This PUD amendment would be necessary for that request as well as um, that at the microbrewery and the restaurant portion doesn't quite fit into office and warehouse. Um, so the floor plan shown on your screen shows the breakout of some of the uses and space within the microbrewery. Um, so the proposed um, brew pub at this location will produce craft beer uh, in-house and sell the product uh, growlers, crawlers uh, for takeaway. Uh, they'll be providing pizza in the dining area. Um, the product will be served on site with other products not created by the microbrewery. Um, the intent is also to provide um, a coffee and donut service in the mornings and kind of creating a morning and night uh, community space, uh, friendly, friendly space. So the use at the microbrewery will contain the brewing area, um, the tap room area, um, there's going to be some room for event space, and there will be um, uh, some restaurant service uh, with pizza service. Um, so land use benefits uh, to the plan unit development. Um, the proposed microbrewery will add a new business attraction to Burnsville that we don't have very many of. Um, uh, there will be a bike rack provided on site uh, for the use and rideshare drop-off locations will be utilized uh, as part of their operations. Uh, deviations requested with the plan unit development amendment uh, to allow painted wall signage. Uh, staff does not support. Uh, to the trash enclosure roof requirement, uh, which staff does support, and a parking reduction, uh, which staff supports and pa as part of it is an existing condition um, of the plan unit development. So the proposal for the microbrewery with the restaurant and the tap room and the event space will be occupying the corner space here um, in an office warehouse building. Uh, the zoning ordinance requires that restaurants located within a thousand feet of a residentially developed property include some odor reducing equipment. Uh, so staff has communicated with the applicant about this ordinance requirement and the applicant did provide some supplemental information which was included uh, in your packet, an additional narrative, and the restaurant use within the microbrewery will be using uh, pizza ovens and the applicant has indicated that the ventilation requirements for their equipment will be satisfactory in alleviating odor uh, between any event in the residential structure. Um, a condition has been included that odor control be addressed uh, should it become a nuisance, um, which is something that was discussed, discussed with the applicant. Uh, the applicant has indicated that they are confident that the equipment that they intend to provide uh, will alleviate these concerns. Um, existing, an existing parking and access agreement is recorded for the properties uh, within this plan unit development and showing a shared parking arrangement and access. Um, so the property line actually does split uh, right here, similar to where this uh, input onto Nicolette Avenue is. Um, so the deviation for reduced parking is related to the uh, 77 additional spaces that the ordinance would require uh, for all of the uses within the buildings. Um, the proposed use, though, will have differing peak hours from existing office warehouse uh, businesses within the uh, development, and by providing some bike par parking and rideshare drop-off locations, um, the 77 spaces would lead to an excess in parking for the site. Uh, this site is also adjacent to the Burnsville Transit Station and north of Heart of the City, where the future Orange Line Station is set to be located. Uh, the uh, original PUD uh, did also include a uh, parking reduction uh, for office warehouse uses as well with the assumption that the warehouse uses would not require as much parking. So supportive of that uh, deviation. 
Uh, there is a trash enclosure that's new proposed in the rear of the building uh, circled here. So the ordinance does require a roof for trash enclosures within business districts. However, the city council has directed staff to amend the ordinance related to screening standards, which will remove the roof requirement. So staff is supportive of the deviation as this uh, very soon is, is no longer to be based on some city council direction for the ordinance. Um, enclosure otherwise meets screening standards and materials used and location, uh, which uh, all will be finalized at the building permit stage as well. Um, so there will be a rooftop chiller unit located on the building. Uh, the mechanical, mechanical equipment will be screened by the existing building design and distance from the roof line, about uh, 55 to 60 feet in each direction uh, from the edge of the roof line. Uh, so based on current design, it will not be visible from the public right-of-way and parking areas. Um, so the applicant did come in with plans requesting a painted sign on the exterior of the building in two locations, uh, one of which was brick and one of which was a composite panel material. The city's ordinances uh, would not allow a painted sign. Uh, it's not permitted. Um, additionally, the existing plan unit development permits panel signage as wall signs. Um, so staff discussed the option of utilizing this panel signage to create the same look for the building, and they, uh, the applicant's amenable to that option. Um, a new comprehensive sign plan and criteria will need to be submitted at the time of sign permit to indicate uh, which tenant spaces can be allowed, uh, how much square footage um, within the development, uh, and to show that uh, this location may, um, so the square here, shows the existing space for panel signage, um, but that is a requirement of the uh, app or of the property owner and not of the city's zoning ordinance. We would allow more space per the city's base ordinances and uh, by updating their sign criteria plan, they can uh, more align with the city's uh, sign ordinance. A uh, condition has been added that the plans be revised within the sign permit application to show a panel sign and not a painted sign on the exterior of the building. Uh, there's also a proposed monument sign, which does meet height and size requirements for the zoning district, and the applicant is aware of the five-foot setback for the proposed signage, so that sign will be finalized at the time of sign permit application as well. Um, for some staff considerations, uh, engineering, building, and fire departments reviewed the application and have no outstanding comments. Um, the applicant will need to work through the liquor licensing process with the city prior to occupancy, and the water department has discussed some operations with the applicant as well. So planning staff did receive public comments related to the application after the agenda background report was published. And these comments were provided in your seat prior to the start of the meeting uh, for additional review. Uh, this will also be a public hearing uh, for public statements for the record. Uh, the proposed use itself of the microbrewery um, staff is supportive of the application, that it will be a unique draw to the area and complement the area north of part of the city and near the Burnsville Transit Station and future Orange Line Transit Station. So staff is recommending approval of the application uh, subject to these conditions, that the conditions of previously approved plan unit developments remain in full force and effect, uh, that odor control be addressed should odor create a nuisance, that the plans be revised at the time of sign permit application to show a panel sign and not a painted sign on the exterior, and that an updated comprehensive sign plan for the building criteria be submitted at the time of sign permit application. Um, applicant team is present this evening to respond to commission questions, and I'm open for any clarifications. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Ms. Arnold. Are there any questions for Ms. Arnold? Commissioner Anderson. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, um, who determines if it is a nuisance for the odor? Is it the people that work in that area or the residential area that's within 1,000 feet? So um, we would, it would be from uh, within the ordinance requirements for um, complaints that get taken in by the Code Enforcement Department. Um, the applicant indicated in some of their additional narratives that they provided that they were willing to work with it if it became an issue and they received complaints um, to uh, further add in additional odor equipment if necessary beyond what they were already planning to use. All right. If the applicant's here, would you like to address the commission? State your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Cooper Johnson, 1260 Minnehaha Avenue West, St. Paul. Um, 
<clears throat> sorry, I'm not sure what people usually say. Uh, we think this is going to be a force for good. Um, my family and I opened a brewery in St. Paul uh, almost three years ago, and it the mission being to serve the community, to be a hub, uh, to support local nonprofits and cultural institutions, museums, things like that. Um, and it's been just awesome. So I'm doing this sort of on my own with their full support and help. Uh, and I hope it can kind of be the same type of thing here. I have family who lives really close to the site on both sides of my family who are going to help out. And so. So I guess I would like to know a little bit about your experience in St. Paul and have there been any issues with odor or any complaints from neighbors? And then if you would just further expand on what you think your hours of operation might be. Yeah. Um, any, any issues that you've seen in your location in St. Paul that might translate to your location yeah. in Burnsville? Odor um, is a non-issue. It's, it's not even uh, an area as far as brewing and gas-fired oven, gas-powered ovens, uh, they aren't even on the list for engineering firms to address as far as odor abatement. It's for brewing, it's steam, um, and for the pizza ovens, it's largely hot air. So we haven't had any issues with that. There's a coffee roaster down the street that just smells like toast just in the parking lot, but it doesn't you know, you have to be 10 feet from their exhaust to smell it. Um, we haven't had any issues with the community where it's, you know, far and away, the community seems to love us. We've never had any complaints about parking or traffic or odor or anything like that. It's just a gathering place. Sorry if I didn't address your whole question. Uh, what do you anticipate the hours? Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah. So we're planning, we're actually planning to open at 1030 or 11 to do like a light lunch service that's happening as prep is happening for the evening, work is happening in the brew house. We, at our current place, we open at 8 a.m. <coughs> during the weeks to serve coffee, during the weekdays to serve coffee and 9 a.m. on the weekends. And it, it works really well. We don't uh, want to open that early at least to start because we want to work our way into it, but it's mainly just to have a place for the people who work in the area to come grab a bite to eat or, you know, there's so many people who, for whatever reason, can have a beer at noon or whatever. They may not be working that day and people who work non-traditional schedules and things like that. So. And then what time do you plan on closing? Oh, we plan on closing at 11 on weekdays and midnight on weekends. Okay, is that about what you do? In yeah, Saint that's Paul? exactly. Yeah, okay. and, and earlier on Sundays, so maybe 9 or 10 on Sundays. Okay, thank you. Commissioner John. Is there any particular reason why you selected this particular location? We wanted to be near the heart of the city. We like Burnsville a lot. I did an assessment of 14 municipalities, and it felt like Burnsville was the best fit and in the most need. We actually, Burnsville is uh, one of our primary, uh, one of the places that most of our customers live who travel to our brewery in St. Paul. So. so if not this particular location, because it is in a, a different district, would there be another location in Burnsville that you'd be considering? Uh, we, looked, on this one? we looked pretty extensively. Mm -hmm. And it's just so hard to find space that would work, that has enough clearance height, first of all, and then having a, a building owner who's willing to work with you just because it's a little more involved of a process. So. And this building owner has been very open and Yeah, helpful. oh, they're wonderful. And they, they, one of the things we were looking for was a building owner who had another brewery tenant in another building and understand, understand it actually how it worked and not just gray to brewery so that was really helpful and we we have a number of municipalities have reached out to us to pitch us you know tax abatements and spaces and things like that and we liked burnsville so much that we picked burnsville instead 
Okay, thank you. Commissioner Roberts. Yeah, we've, um, I don't know if you know, but we received some um, concerns by some of the neighbors. Uh, I mean, this is a business park mm -hmm. for business, and all of a sudden there's going to be a bar there. Um, whether you call it a brew pub or whatever, it's still a bar. And the concerns were that this is now not going to be the business atmosphere that they signed a lease for for their business. All of a sudden, you're going to come in and do this. Do you see any confliction with that type with neighbors? And I mean, I've seen, I went by and I looked at it, you know, I did around it, looking at everything that's going on. It's definitely a business orientated type atmosphere. You're across 13 from the heart of the city. So getting to the heart of the city is going to be a chore anyway. So my big questions were that location, location, location. Where do you see this being the big draw? I mean, give me your, you know, your, your aspect on why you want this location or was it just all that's left? Oh, the, we, we want to be located centrally and being just across the street from the heart of the city and near the uh, transit station. I mean, it seemed perfect. Um, and in the building we're currently in, in St. Paul, there's 500,000 square feet and the vast majority of the space is for businesses and offices and we're a meeting space after work, we're a meeting space during the day that you don't have to buy beer to come and use our facilities as a breakout space from your office. Um, and we don't have, tra we have very little traffic before seven at night. So we found it works really well and it's kind of a new model that we're almost an amenity rather than a distraction or anything like that. And we liked having businesses around us. You can come grab some pizza, have a beer, have a Coke before you head home. Maybe you want to wait out traffic. That's a, a huge part of our business in St. Paul is just the people who work in the building. Okay. Um, can I still just, yep, I got go just a couple more things. Um, one of the things that you guys listed about was um, selling other products. I mean, are you going to have a full liquor license? Uh, that would be the hope. Okay. But, but very, very tertiary to our own beer. Right. But just so that if a, if a family comes or a group of people and someone doesn't like beer or drink beer, um, that's actually one of our biggest complaints. So it would be a very limited selection beyond our own beer, but maybe hams or something like that just for... But I mean a full liquor license as in alcohol. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're going to have that as well. Um, live music? It's not core. We okay. probably we just, hope yeah. Just trying to you know put all these points together. Mm -hmm. um, coffee and donuts was mentioned, things like that. So you're going to be having more of a when you start opening up for earlier hours, obviously. That yeah, kind of that that's a little up in the air. Okay, we we're just we're focusing on pizza and our own beer. Okay. Anything else? Um, not at the second, no. Okay, Commissioner John. So, kind of playing off of Commissioner Roberts, so tell us a little bit about your location in St. Paul. What kind of a neighborhood is that in? It, it's, uh, we're on the edge of an industrial area. Okay. So we're on one side of our street is industry for about a mile, square mile, and the other side is single family homes for four or five miles all the way across St. Paul. Whereabouts in St. Paul? On uh, Prior Avenue, uh, just north of the Menards on University. Okay, okay. Uh, do you get a lot of complaints? Some of the complaints we were reading about, not complaints, but I would say um, hesitations, is um, someone working by herself in, in an office, uh, cigarette butts, people being out at late hours, cars being left in parking lots, that type of thing. What is your, your experience? Can you calm some of those fears? Yeah. Are there anything that... We've never had um, a complaint in that way. Um, it doesn't attract that type of crowd. I would say a very, very small, it's probably less representative of than the population as a whole smoke cigarettes. Um, they're not drinking to excess. We have in St. Paul, we have a wet house two blocks away 
And I think the number of times we've had to cut somebody off from service is two in three years. Um, we have a policy in place to call Ubers for people we're even slightly concerned about. We don't allow cars in the lot overnight. We, we were actually begged by the other tenants in the building to start opening earlier, and they've asked us to be open later because they do see it as an amenity. Um, we, I mean, we haven't had any issues, especially with the neighbors. We host, we donate to everything, church fundraisers, all that. I mean, we don't say no to anything, and we host community events constantly. So, it, I mean, it really is very different than a traditional bar atmosphere. Today, since we've been open at 8, we had a group of probably 15 parents with their small children, and they're playing board games and drinking coffee and having juice boxes, and it's really nice and not what you'd imagine of somewhere that sells liquor. Mm -hmm. Now you said that you wouldn't allow cars to remain parked, but yet people are being Ubered home. What happens to their cars? Yeah, we, we asked that they call somebody to come pick it up. Okay. Um, but sometimes, you know, it'll just have to be towed. But the majority of people who we have called Ubers for, which is maybe a dozen or so, mm -hmm. they didn't drive there anyway, because they knew they were gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. It is in 711, and we do have uh, one person uh, who signed up. So if Ms. Limbeck would come, and please address the commission with your name and your address. Uh, my name is Christina Limbeck. My home address is 16087 Harmony Trail, Lakeville. My business address is 12255 Nicollet Avenue. Um, I own a medical equipment and, and supply company. I've been in business for 23 years. I moved to Burnsville to be in an office park. I was next door to a bar for 21 years. I have been there. I've been at the bar just served pizza. They had a cafe open in the morning for a while. You see things that it, it, it's it's a nuisance to get in to get out of your car in the morning and you find garbage, broken bottles. Maybe not with a brew pub because they're serving glasses, but there is. I moved to Birdsville for an office park, and if if I I wouldn't have left where I was at if I wanted to be by a bar still. I got sick of the garbage. I got sick of a lot of stuff. Now, I would, brew pubs are fine, but I don't want it in our business park. I'm not alone. I know that there's a couple other tenants that feel the same way as I do. Um, I love where I'm located. I'm close to the freeway. We deliver our medical equipment to, the, to all of the Twin Cities area. I don't want to leave Burnsville, but this is something that's very important to our company, and we really want to keep it the same and not have a nuisance of garbage in the morning, cigarette butts, blood on the sidewalks from fights. I've seen it all. Um, the other thing is I do come into work late sometimes um, when you can't sleep and you own your own business. You come into work late and then um, I don't want to have drunk people around when I just want to get in and, you know, undo the, th undo the, the alarm and get into the business safe. and. Um, my daughter also works for me, same thing with her. She lives in Birdsville right behind um, the heart. Of, she right, lives right behind here. And same with her. I don't want her coming in at 23 years old, cute little blonde, you know, and have drunk people, you know, harass her or anything. We would have to call the cops. And I do know that um, we've had to call the cops at our old location often. Um, we had a lot of break-ins, gas stolen from our cars, license plates stolen, dumping in our dumpsters. We've, we had a lot of that sort of things happen. And it was from a lot of people that would go around to the bar and party in the back or whatever. So, but that's my concern. And, you know, I, I, I love our location and I know I'm not alone in our business park. Thank you. Do you have questions for Ms. Limbeck? 
Yeah, I was just curious if, sorry. Okay. <laughs> did, did any of the things that he talked about earlier, that help you at all, or do you still feel like it would be a, a bar atmosphere? A bar is a bar. You're sober alcohol, people drink, they have a good time. Um, parking is an issue. If I'm on the side of the building that um, I, I'm adjoining to them, we don't have enough parking as it is. It's very limited. You put a bar in, it's going to be even worse for our side of the building. Um, I have elderly people. I have people in wheelchairs, um, high-end quads that need to come in and get their catheters from us. And they have to have close access. Some of them don't walk, some use canes, some use wheelchairs, manual power, whatever. I need to have that open for them to get access to our building. Because um, some don't want us to deliver, they want to come in and pick up their stuff. It's like their, their monthly thing they do. And so it's like, it, I, it's kind of different, but it's a social event for some old elderly people that come into our store once a month. So. Okay, thank you. Any other, okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Come on up. Please state your name and address for the record. Okay, thank you. My name is Kim France. I wasn't planning on speaking today, but I'd like to. I live in Prior Lake, but my business is in the same um, park. Not, exactly business park uh, which is 12245 Nicolette Avenue when your map was up earlier my business is right under about the word area <laughs> so we are right across it used to be the dough shop people act asked about it all the time my business is Twin Cities escape rooms so I'm in potentially a little bit different situation in that I'm currently sharing some of the same operating hours that I expect that they would I'm pretty excited about the potential of it, actually, I um, definitely don't mean to take away from anything that Ms. Lindquist, did I say that? Oh, sorry, <laughs> that she said. Um, but my parking area is a little bit more direct with the shared um, parking spaces that would be taken up. I'm not always there during the day, Monday through Friday, really like business hours, but I sometimes am. There are never more than four cars among us anyway. Overnight, I've never seen a car. I've never seen any more than one parked car for one of the um, businesses down the way a little bit overnight at all. Um, there were a few things I meant to say that I've kind of forgotten. If you have any questions, perhaps that'll help me jog my memory. Any questions? Commissioner so, Roberts? So you're in favor of this? I am. Okay, that's what I want to clarify. Commissioner John? That was my question. Good question. <laughs> Uh, oh, perhaps one thing I meant to say, when the business used to say dough shop, I've been in, um, in place, I believe, 34 months. I don't think I shared a lot of time with when the dough shop was there, but almost all of my customer groups say, oh, is that donuts? We would love to go across the way and get donuts. I'm trying to kind of do a quick estimate in my head. I would say 60% of my business uh, groups are families and would really think it was fun to go ahead and share soda and have a donut afterwards if that was available. The other 40 probably is young adults and uh, people who are making more of a date night or a group uh, date evening and they probably would enjoy a beer. The rideshare option sounds like a great idea to me because from my experience, if they're planning on Ubering home, they also Uber there. Ms. Franz, uh -huh. can you identify your business on the, the map that's on the sure. screen right now? Um, or was it on the satellite? It's about under the word thousand. <laughs> not quite that far over and if I'm right I think we share the back area are you no I'm not under the worse. front I'm, I'm right to the about left section the, yeah okay. where the, there's not very much parking that's where I'm at right oh, okay yeah. so I think our back area is maybe kind of no I you guys are on the other side Do I'm we in kind of make an L I'm on the, you see where the proposed lot is? Uh -huh. I'm on the left right there. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. me. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. There is someone I share the back lot with who I thought was maybe your child. Oh, okay. Got it. Gotcha. So I'm sorry. I misunderstood no. where we are. All right. Businesses. Are there any other questions for Ms. Franz? Okay, thank you so much. Is there anybody else who would like to address the commission? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing at 719 and open the conversation for the Planning Commission. Thoughts? Comments? Mm. Commissioner Roberts. Um, I, I don't know what the rules and regs are for the city. You can answer this. Um,
how do we assign designated parking stalls to a business? Um, in this case, it's an existing shared parking area, and there aren't uh, designated. Uh, a property owner can choose to put up signage that might designate it as a certain uh, businesses um, spaces, um, and then there are designated accessibility uh, spaces that are uh, calculated out through the building code as to how many of the spaces are accessible for the the space. Okay, so it's done on their own. Yes. Commissioner Wad. Uh, I, I just wanted to clarify that the tavern use is a is an allowed conditional use within this zoning. That's correct. Okay, just wanted to clarify that. Thanks. And Commissioner John, oh, I'm so back and forth on this. I <laughs> I have to say I really enjoy the idea of having a, a brew house here in Burnsville. I think it's awesome that Burnsville is the place you want to come to. I. Um, we look at Bald Man Brewery over in Egan, and I think that's that's excellent. Uh, you know, Chris John, as a personal as a person, I would go help move you in. That's how excited I would be about this, and I do love the uh, the um, escape rooms too. So it would be it would be a great uh, <laughs> pair off. But looking at a planning commission and and, and seeing some of the complaints, it, it makes me hesitate just a little bit, and. Um, listening to Ms. Limbeck and, and her concerns, I, I can understand them. I really can. Because when she came in here, she wasn't looking at uh, moving in next to a, a brew pub or a bar or even a restaurant, if you will. Where is the line? Because I know Grand Slam is very close to there. And they have food. And um, so this... It may take me a moment to go back. So most of these are all B3, and a restaurant would also be allowed in the B3 district with this particular development. It's that it is an existing plan unit development, and the conditional use as well as some of the other uh, part portions of the application uh, made it a d plan unit development amendment application rather than a conditional use I permit see. application. Okay. okay. That's where my confusion is coming from then. Okay. Okay. I completely understand that. <sighs> Zerno, do you know in in the two buildings that we've seen, is it one owner for those two buildings that is the landlord for these tenants? Yes. Okay. And so the owner of the complex is is comfortable with this plan, it seems. Um but as far as what the planning commission can do, we need to look at what is allowable under uh, the city ordinance. And I, from what I can tell, everything uh, that uh, has been presented to us today um, falls within the standards of reasonableness. Um, Ms. Limbeck, I completely understand your concerns, but unfortunately, from my perspective, um, some of those concerns need to be taken up with the landlord. And the, the idea of having available parking um, for your business is probably something that could be worked out as well. Um, sorry, that's my son's school. <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> hopefully everything's okay. Um, but... Um, <clears throat> I, I think as far as, as what I want to do here, I, I'm supportive of the project. I think it's a good idea. I like the fact that um, you have some experience doing this. Um, we asked you a lot of questions, and I'm sorry if that made you uncomfortable, but you answered all of the, the questions that we had. Um, so at this point, uh, after Commissioner Roberts and anyone else would like to speak, I would stand for a motion. Um. When I talked with the owners of the Bald Man Brewing, I mean, it's in Egan, but it's still down the road. I mean, it's, it's in the wheelhouse of what we're talking about. It's the exact same type of thing. Um, it's in a similar type of building. There's offices and there's businesses right next to it. It's kind of slammed right into this thing. Um, they have yet to have, and I was, that's what my concerns were, were a bar. You'd love to see it right in the heart of the city. That would have been great. Um, being across 13 is, is going to be tricky, but... Um, they didn't really have a lot of things going on and they restrict people from as much as they can't force people not to go outside 
They don't allow people to congregate in front of their building and things like that. Um, it was just a different type of atmosphere. And as much as we are on the fence of things, we love seeing new businesses come in. Um, I do see your definite point of view. I mean, that, that's what we're up here for, is to look out for the best interest of not only somebody coming in, but somebody who's already there. So that's what we're here for. The city council obviously has final say on all of this. We're going to be a, a go-between, that type of thing. So we want to look at all the things and we can add to whatever we send to the city council. Um, you're limited on parking anyway from where you are. Uh, that was my question was the possible designated stuff. If you're allowed to actually put up signs and say, don't park here for these hours. These are for my people. Right. I mean, I, I would. We're gone at five, so. Yeah, and see, at that well, point, at that away. point, aside from the few that might go for a lunch or things like that, um, the people coming to your building for you won't be experiencing somebody at midnight leaving. Okay, the person that's going to get that's their, their supplies and things like that. So from a timing standpoint, it might work out okay. Um, and then we have to talk about being a neighbor. You know, you're going to have to be, if this goes through, you're going to have to be a neighbor. Um, and we don't want to have a whole lot of conflict going on with that as well. And that's where you come in, you know, to be that awesome neighbor and assure her that these things are going to work out. And um, brew parbs are the up and coming thing. I mean, I, I think they're a very nice atmosphere compared to your slam drunk bar. We've all seen those. That's a whole different dog, and that would be different. But I just had those comments to throw out there where, yeah, I was on the fence because I'm looking out for you, but then I'm looking out for you because this is part of our heart of the city growth. I mean, the buildings we're putting up there are going up, and they're looking very, very nice, and we need to have some things like that they're going to draw. Combination with your business i can totally see why a family or somebody would want to get involved with that so not to take up any more time i just had to express that just to make sure that you knew where i was standing but um thinking about you and thinking about you so thank you both for expressing your opinions thank you mr roberts um i did just want to for the record point out that there were two other people who had sent some messages in before the meeting um one from Fuller Sales, which is a neighbor, and another from Carlson Consulting and Accounting, which is a neighbor, and they both shared some of the same concerns that you have. Um, and, you know, we don't take that lightly. We, one of the things, and I think Commissioner John will agree with me on this, that he and I are very conscientious of is the safety of the, the area and anything that we can do to at least uh, get people thinking about that uh, is important to us. So if there's no other conversation, I would stand for motion. I'll make the motion. Can you mm -hmm. can you put it back up on the screen so I can? Yes. Oh, there it was. Mm -hmm. uh, so I move that we uh, recommend to the city council approval of the application of Cooper Johnson for a planned unit development amendment for a tavern microbrewery to be located at 12257 Nicollet Avenue South, subject to the uh, following conditions. Um, the previously approved PUD shall remain in full force and effect. Odor control shall be addressed should odor create a nuisance. The plans be revised at the time of site permit application to show a panel sign and not a painted sign on the exterior of the building. And an updated comprehensive sign plan for the building criteria be submitted at the time of sign permit application. Do we have a second? I second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, and this will be up for final consideration by the City Council next Tuesday, the 17th of September. Thank you. All right, so that brings us to our next agenda item, which is a public hearing for Dean and Barbara Johnson Holdings for planned unit development amendment for exterior materials and landscaping deviations located at 1404 County Road 42 West. And it's nice to see you, Ms. Dean. Nice to see you as well. It's been a while. Um, so this application was before the Planning Commission back in 2017. Um, and if I can recall correctly, I don't think any of the Planning Commission members um, were on the Planning Commission at this time. So it's a, kind of a refresh from you. Although, um, if you circle around the community, you may be familiar with the building and the transformation that's um, gone on. 
So this particular property it is on County Road 42 um, and um, Irving Avenue, so it's um, northeast. Um, the site was a precision tune auto, so it was a single user. Um, the property owner and applicant came in in 2017 and proposed a facade remodel. Um, that triggered um, a planning and development amendment. Um, not only were there some changes with the exterior materials, the window um, coverage for the exterior elevations, but also some setback deviations. They reconfigured the parking lot. So that was before the Planning Commission and City Council. They recommended approval. Um, when those plans came into building permit, they had changed up a bit. So um, the approval showed a drive through um, around the building because one of the end tenants was supposed to be a coffee or donut type shop and that tenant wasn't secured. Um, so they were left with trying to lease out the space. Um, ultimately, that drive through was eliminated and you have your three tenants that you have today. Five Guys, Jersey Mike's, and Sprint. So um, to catch you up, um, as the request was going through the building permit process and the building permit approval process, um, one of the things that they had to do to accommodate circulation around the building was remove a portion of the east portion of the building to allow circulation. Prior to, to that, when it was a precision precision tune, there was no circular access throughout the property. So they cut off part of the building, um, changed some of the exterior materials, and um, unfortunately they were um, built as a concrete masonry unit um, that was not impregnated with color. So it's basically like a gray block with texture, which is um, a prohibited material in our city code. Um, so one of the requests for the planning and development um, deviations is to um, ask, the applicant is asking that that be considered a permitted material under the flexibility that we have under the planning and development. Another thing that came about um, as the site um, was being developed and changed, amended a bit, uh, the applicant and property owner realized there's really not a lot of room here. On paper, it looks like landscaping can be Place, but when you actually get out there and try to, you know, place trees and you're limited to, you know, three feet in width in some areas, that's just not going to accommodate a full-grown tree. Um, there's also some challenges with the site. It basically sits in a hole. Um, so what the applicant's proposing um, to do is reduce the amount of trees that were initially proposed, 13 trees, and they're proposing to plant three trees, but really beef up um, their shrubs, um, their grasses and perennials around the, the perimeter of the site. Um, so I did a lot of talking, um, didn't pull up the elevations. Basically, um, in the color picture is what was built. Um, that's the concrete masonry unit that's um, uncolored, unimpregnated color. Um, and then the elevation on the left is what was approved through building permit, uh -huh. which shows a base of um, a stone veneer with um, ephus above to, to blend in with um, what was built along the, um, the south elevation. The applicant's requesting to paint the concrete masonry unit um, a similar yellowish color to match the ephus on the building. Staff, however, is, um, is not supportive of that request. Um, what we have asked is that a material is affixed to um, the existing surface that meets one of our permitted um, materials within our city code. And, and we can be flexible of what's allowed. Um, we just want it to meet our city code requirements. And then the landscape plan basically on the left is what was approved. Um, uh. A majority of the changes is the amount of trees um, to shrubs, again, the perennials and a mix of grasses. Um, another item to point out uh, that was referenced in your staff report, the original approval required, um, or they had proposed a bike parking that was 
called out as a, um, a benefit to the site. Um, it has not yet been installed, so staff is asking that that's installed prior to final occup occupancy of the building. With that, um, staff recommends approval um, with the following conditions. One, that the elevations are revised to meet zoning code requirements. Um, that the property owner adds some directional signage around the site. Um, there was kind of a, <laughs> when I did a site visit, there was a makeshift sign that um, showed um, circulation, like I think it's had a one-way sign um, that we were just asking that they in install something permanent uh, to provide some clarity to people that visit that site. And that prior to final occupancy that the bike um, rack is installed. The applicant is here. Um, if there are any further questions, um, I'm here as well. We do have some questions for you, Ms. Dean. Mr. John. Yeah, my brother's an architect, so it was it was nice to reach out to him to see if Evis in, in the C, impregnated CMU compared to unimpregnated CMU, all those types of things. He said the biggest concern with painting it over is is peeling paint, things like that, making it kind of degrading the look. Is that the reason why the city wants to move to either EFIS or some other form of landscaping? So um, the unimpregnated um, concrete masonry unit, it, it is more of a, a plain, um, unadorned um, look to, to it. Um, and because it's explicitly prohibited, um, I, as a staff member, can't sign off on this. So, um, it, having the color gives, I guess, some um, added qualities to a building. Um, it's more permanent. Like you said, you don't have to worry about peeling. Um, it, it just, it's a longer lasting if, if the color is integrated into the, the product itself. Um, we do allow painting of brick. Um, and some concerns of that um, expressed um, in the past um, have been, you know, if, if it peels, that becomes an eyesore. Um, with anything, with peeling of paint, um, it ultimately becomes a code enforcement issue. Mm -hmm. So, um... oh, that's a good yeah. answer. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Commissioner Roberts. Um, was the brick basically the oversight that was made by the occupant and the city? I read that there was an or there was a mistake that people they just didn't catch it. Is that basically what we're talking about? So um, plans were submitted. Yeah. Um, a memo was provided to correct um, the prohibited material. Um, the plans were revised and resubmitted. What got into the contractor's hands, we believe, was not. The yeah, final yeah. approved plan in their hands. So the contractor went off of what was in their hands and not the city approved version. Okay. And the applicant can certainly correct me if <laughs> if I stated that incorrectly. Commissioner Wad, um, I I had the same question. Um, next question is about bike parking. Um, do you, and I know it's, it was on the plan, do you, for, do, are these businesses going to draw people on their bikes? Um, I drove around it too and, and it, I think it might be kind of dicey riding your bike in that parking lot. It was kind of dicey driving my car through it. <laughs> um, that's my first question. My second question is, is that the, the, um, the recommendation says prior to occupancy. The building is fully occupied, right? Um, I'll answer the first question and then the second question, if okay. I may. Yeah. Um, so bike parking, um, it was included in the original approval. We do encourage, um, just from a, a city standpoint, um, if there's ever opportunity to add that as an amenity, that, um, that it be added. There are sidewalks along County Road um, 42 and uh, along Irving. Um, so it is an added benefit to those that, that whether it's dicey or, or not, um, it does provide opportunity for someone to bike there. Also for employees, um, some employees might not have access to um, vehicular transportation, and so this um, provides a spot for them to store their bike um, safely and lock it up. 
Um, as far as... Um, prior to occupancy. Yes, prior to occupancy. So they currently have a temporary oh. um, temporary CO, temporary certificate of occupancy. Um, they do not hold a final occupancy okay. at this point. Thank you. Commissioner Anderson. Um, so the, the my question has to do with the, the originally proposed trees. Is the, the worry that that will block view of the, you know, the, the stores from 42, and that's why they don't want them there? Um, that is uh, a major concern of the tenants and from the property owner. Um, spacing is also of concern from a staff standpoint. Um, there's just, it's a very tight site um, and not a lot of room um, for our mature trees. And it they, might like look, they might look great as soon as they plant them, but then as time goes on, they'll probably start ripping up sidewalks yeah. and <laughs> growing into retaining walls. And, and then it looks like a, most of it on the siding is just now going to be shrubs of some sort? Um, along the north side of the building, correct. Okay. And on the north. And at least along the, I'm thinking about like the border by 42, because I see all those little circles there. I'm wondering, were those supposed to be kind of different shrubs that are being added there, or is that going to be anything in particular? Uh, planting shrubs, perennials, grasses. Okay. <clears throat> All right, if the applicant would like to address the commission, please state your name and address for the record. Mark Krogh, Java Company, St. Paul, Minnesota. Thank you. Um, so this, starting with the, the stucco and the CMU wall, it was not by intention. I mean, the cost, it's about the same to do a CMU wall as it is to do stucco. Um, what happened, and it wasn't the fault of the city, I mean, it was, it was intentional, it wasn't intentional. Our contractor picked up plans that were stamped, that had the CMU wall, and unfortunately, uh, those weren't the final plans. So, should have I caught that? Maybe. I, I think if I looked at 100 plans, I would miss that on 99.999%. I mean, I just wouldn't have caught it. I don't think anybody would. I think if we gave you guys the same plans, I think you guys would have missed it too. So, but long story short, he did his job and he built what was on the plans that were stamped. And I actually have the original set of stamped plans, not with me, but I got a, a photocopy of them and I can bring them to city council too. And we wouldn't make a big deal of this, um, except for it's it's about a $17,000 cost to change this. Um, Sprint are one of our tenants. In order to get them in, they need to be in by Christmas. We had to, we had to pave late in the season. Um, it buckled, which tends to happen when the ground starts to freeze. And that was a you know $25,000 overrun, and all these little things you know add up. And uh, for an unintentional mistake, which if done right and is primed correctly and painted, it'll look beautiful. So I actually do have a breakdown of the costs I'm willing to share with you guys. Um, I don't know if you want that for your overhead or Can not. Can we put those on the overhead? Sure. Thank you. Um, and actually, if you place it it's on there. the podium, okay. and there's a camera right above, and it should pick it up. Where? It's not too fancy of a bed we put together, you know, um, said my GC put that together, but it's pretty accurate. Uh, it was at 24,000, we, you know, beat up some subs a little bit and got the price down a little bit. Um, but we believe if we do the correct primer that, you know, it'll look really nice and, uh, you know, it was a mistake and nobody tried to do it, you know, so we're, we think, you know, going back and doing the, the it, it won't look any better in our opinion and it would save us some money and help the project. So I also have a picture of the stamp plans, which I don't know, probably. So you know they were stamped by you know by the city and then you 
Oops. So painted. Oops. Painted CMU split face block, but so again, um, you know, I don't know if you guys have any questions, but it definitely was not intentional, and uh, you know, we want it to look beautiful. So it's, we're hoping that you guys work with us and help us out. And then as um, just jumping to the landscaping, um, our, our tenants have provided letters of support for this. Uh, the building is, the building, the lot, the lot is a smaller lot than our neighbors. Our neighbors, if you look at, you know, from TCF to, you know, all the Chick-fil-A that, you know, they're on a lot bigger parcels, and they're able to put some of their trees in the back, not facing County Road 42. On top of that, they don't sit in a hole like we do. So, uh, get a couple of situations that kind of make it make sense to work with us in that, hopefully. Uh, Commissioner John, a question for the applicant. Yeah, so I, I don't want to tie your hands or anything. One of the one of the one of the criteria for a variance cannot be economic. Yeah, so it no, can't be the seventeen thousand dollars. You're right. You're I, I completely agree. It, it was a mistake. So you know, hardship was, is a it, right. We think a hardship, not this economic, but as far as timing, we have to take down the tenants' signage and inconvenience and. You know, just the amount of time it's going to take, and for no benefit, in our opinion, right? If done right with you know priming and painting correctly, Ms. Dean. If, if I if I may just interrupt, sure. um, so the request is for a plan unit development. I just want to clarify that it, that's a little different than a variance. Um, right. with, with a variance, you um, do you have to prove a practical difficulty, and you can't use economics as one of the um, reasoning. Um, this is a plan unit development. So um, just, again, a point of clarification. Um, it, it's a little different. Sometimes they're, um, they're used similarly. Um, but in this case, um, what they have to show is that there's a benefit um, to the community as a whole, that they're bringing something unique and different to the area, that it's an asset, um, that it's a, maybe a unique material that we don't have listed in our city code that um, is just as great and durable. Um, they're adding, in exchange for deviations to setbacks, they're adding sol a solar roof and electric vehicle parking. So it's, they're kind of giving here, but doing something great in exchange. Okay. Um, it's, it's a little different. So it's not really a variance, it's a, no. right, so it doesn't fall under the same criteria. Correct, correct. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> Just a point of clarification. Thank you. Great point, and I remember that actually, now that I think of it, when we filled out the application, we were, that's the way we decided to go with it, so. Ms. Dean, so the CMU, the way it stands right now, unpainted, is also not permitted, correct? Correct. Okay, and so I, I guess what, how did we get to this point? Did the city notice, hey, this building is not being built to the plans that we had approved? Um, I, I mean, I'll be, I'll be quite honest with you. It's a, it's a nice looking building. Um, I think the CMU really um, should look better. And so I, I'm curious just how we got here to this particular request. So um, the application was submitted um, to the Planning Commission. It, the building actually looked different than what it does um, right now. Um, through Planning Commission City Council approval, or City Council approval in 2017 to submittal of building permit, changes were made in the building exterior. Um, and it still, it met city code as far as breakdown in percentages of allowed material and minor materials um, and met everything. We got them to the point where they met everything except for the um, east, southeast wall. 
Um, it was noted in a memo that um, it just doesn't meet city code, revise your plans, the architect submitted revised plans. Um, the stamp version, I believe that that was um, given out was um, from our building department um, plans examiner. It says on there, there is a note that you need to meet all zoning requirements as well. There is a note there. Um, so there, at some point, yes, it, it did get missed that um, there should have been this change. Um, as far as the... I just lost my train of thought. Um, as far as um, the materials, yes, they're prohibited. They, it was flagged at time of inspection. So what happens is a building um, is under construction. Our building inspectors go out. They look at you know footings. They look at the interior, the exterior, the mechanical equipment, electrical. Um, planners go out, we typically look at the exterior materials, um, the parking, the landscaping, does it meet all the approved plan, the signs, the lighting, I may have said that. Um, and it was no noticed, hey, this doesn't match up. I, I went out there, hey, this doesn't match up with what, what I signed off on. Something's wrong, I need to alert Mark and his team, um, which I did. We've had multiple phone conversations, email exchanges, memos, here's some all, it, it was built wrong, let's correct it, here's some alternatives that you can do. Um, Mark had brought up, you know, the cost, um, you know, issues, um, I, and decided to go the route of um, asking for forgiveness after, um, and which you can do, there's that opportunity, there's an application, which they filled out. Um, and, and this is his opportunity to ask for um, an exception to the city code, uh, which he's asking for tonight. Ms. Garrels. Uh, if I could, I just wanted to explain for the Planning Commission the way that our building permit reviews work. Uh, what happens is there are multiple staff that review building plans and building permits, and one of them is the building official, uh, and their stamp was on it, but there also need to meet everyone else's um, requirements and standards. So um, just because there is the one stamp from, that means it meets the building code part of it. It doesn't mean that it meets the fire code. It doesn't mean that it meets the zoning code, etc. cetera. So I uh, just wanted you to be familiar with how that process works. Once everyone has signed off on the permit, then there's an okay for it to be issued and, uh, and it goes from there. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, just to remind ourselves, this is a public hearing, yeah. so. I just want to say one more thing. Uh, in my experience on these projects, the you know the GC, the general contractor, they go and they pick up the plans directly from the city. And maybe I'm going to revise my process some going forward. And it wasn't intentional. The city, I mean, there's nothing but great people. This has been a challenging project. There's, there's easements. There's I mean, she, Regina's been working on this for like two years on this. I mean, she's been a patron saint. I mean, seriously, she probably hates me because I call her so much. But the city's been nothing but amazing to work with. And we're doing projects all around the Twin Cities. And I got to tell you, I would love to come back to Burnsville and do some more projects because some cities, it's like they don't even want you. It's, they're not. But I, I want to say is that we're not trying to come here and be poo-poo the city or anything like this. It was a simple mistake. Um, and we just, you know, asked for forgiveness. We, we built the wrong thing. Our GC took the plans and, and built it. And if we could have had it back and turned back the clock, we would rather have built stucco. It wouldn't have cost any more. It probably would have been even cheaper because we would have done, like, wood frame. And anyways, you guys don't... It would have been probably more economical to to do it that way. So, you know, hopefully you work with us. I think we can make it look great uh, with a little, bit of, a little bit of paint and it'll look beautiful. And, you know, we could even do, maybe add some brick at the bottom. I mean, we're willing to be flexible. You know, you meet us halfway, we'll, we'll put some maybe brick to match uh, the facade in the front at the bottom. You know, so, you know, somewhere halfway. 
All right. We're not unreasonable. Don't go anywhere. Commissioner John. <laughs> so you got to look at it from our point of view as well. Like yes, when you were absolutely. looking at the trees, you were saying, well, some of these places don't have the, doesn't seem like they have the same tree amounts. So if we let this go, does that start the slippery slope? Do other businesses say, well, hey, they got the CMU on there, and, and nobody said anything about that. So we have to look at it both ways. So mm -hmm. nothing against you, and we really appreciate your business here. I love the fact that we have a Jersey Mike's here. That's awesome. Here, here. <laughs> this is a big day for us here. Uh, but I was just going to ask that. Would you be willing to meet us halfway? Would there be things, improvements that you'd be willing to do to help us out Yes. So that we, and, and I think you answered Absolutely. that. Is there a way we can still move forward with the project or the allowance of occupancy, given that over a frame of time, this, these issues become cleaned up? Or does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, Chair, if the Planning Commission wishes to uh, make a recommendation with uh, to change um, one of the conditions that's proposed, um, you can certainly do that. Um, for example, if you wanted to say, um, you know, the lower portion of that south southeast wall um, shall be revised to... Um, stone veneer and then the remainder of the wall sh shall be painted or whatever you wish the recommendation to be. I think you have that, that flexibility mm -hmm. as your recommendation to city council. Right. It was final say in this. So if we said maybe in five years, would you be willing to look at that, say over a five year period? Um, be willing to make those adjustments, um, whether it be using the EFIS or anything along those lines? Yeah, I think we can just work into the budget at that point. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Commissioner Wood. I was going to say, I think if we're going to, um, it would be nice to see what, you know, what is it going to look like if it's going to be, if it's going to change, or even if it was painted, it'd be nice to see a rendering of what painted mm -hmm. the painted block would look like versus... Uh, the gray block. Well, and at this point, I think that's for a recommendation of the city council, that's up to our discretion. Mr. Roberts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I get the feeling that we're pretty much all in the same boat here. I think the landscaping issue, we're okay. There's there's right. sympathy yeah. where you're at. You know, when you're in a car driving, you're even lower than standing. Absolutely. And yeah, so where you're at is, is tough. So I can understand the whole tree thing and that shrubs will look good. Um, I'm actually inclined to say, too, the building doesn't look that bad right now. I mean, it's fairly sharp, you know, for everything that's Agreed. in there. Yeah. Um, I guess for us, it's finding the, the right wordage to take this forward so everybody is on a give and take. And I, I personally don't know how to rewrite this like that. You know, do we just ask for someone else to do it? If you can come back in, I guess that's the other question for you. Would you want to come back and give us an idea of what this is going to look like? Yeah, with a rendering or? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that'd be no problem. I could definitely do that. Come because back everything then would basically be re reworded. And for us to look at a cleaner slate with something to look at of what it could be like. Yeah, I could do a rendering and if you like that, um, stone veneer that we have in the front if we put that in the bottom um, if that would be kind of a meet in the middle i can definitely get the drawn up and we'll come back uh, next planning commission um, and i can show you guys exactly what a picture's worth a thousand words and yeah i my i had i was going to add the architect to it and he it, it didn't quite get to it <laughs> so uh, unfortunately i um, I think I'll, I'll have it done, a nice rendering, so you guys can really see what it looks like. But what I'm thinking in my mind is, you know, the painted block and then uh, the the veneer at the bottom, uh, the stone veneer that we have in the front uh, of the building. I think that'd be kind of a happy, be in the middle type of mm -hmm. situation. Oh, sure. Yeah. Show, where the, show the bike rack in there. Yep, so show the bike there. rack. <laughs> we'll figure out where to put that bike yeah. rack in, maybe yeah. on the roof. <laughs> do you do you have estimates for the cost of painting the building and 
will you be using licensed insured professionals to do that? Yeah, our GC handles that, our general contractor. So, you know, I, I'm assuming the answer is yes. You know, so. So the cost is negligible since your oh, your group is doing it. Yeah, you know, the cost the cost to paint that side wall is about you know somewhere between two thousand. I think it's about two thousand dollars, maybe three thousand. I could be mixing up a project in my mind. And how much for the veneer if we went three feet up around the backside? Uh, I think I might even have that. Yeah, that was. I think it's down. I think it's like fifty two hundred bucks, fifty two fifty. Okay. So. It's about cuts about in half, you know, okay. which I guess we eat by the I mean we just want to make progress, you know, and I think that's you know, hey it happened. Can't do anything about it. So let's try to be fair and we'll meet in the middle and but yeah, I can definitely get that drawn up as far as a plan so you guys can see it. Okay. I would like to have the public hearing now, so thank you okay. very much. You're and very welcome. I will open the public hearing at 8 o'clock if there's anybody who would like to speak to this. And I will close the public hearing at 8 o'clock. <laughs> so conversation from the commission. What are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of uh, meeting in the middle with some direction from the commission as far as what the aesthetic should ultimately look like? Um, do you like the idea of um, going back to the final plans that should have been followed um, when the uh, sides and the front were redeveloped, uh, or any other suggestions, Mr. Awad? Yeah, I just I just wanted to re repeat that if it's going to, it'd be nice to see what's being proposed, and so if it's going to be, uh, you know. It's hard to commit right now to meet in the middle without knowing what that's going to look like. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's my only comment. So, Ms. Dean, the only, uh, there's no time constraints to this. It's just a, a, the extension of getting the final certificate of occupancy. Is that correct? So um, a couple of time frames that we just need to be aware of is the 120-day um, the clock um, for review of projects, and I'm, I believe we just extended that. So I'm just looking at the staff report. It looks November 14th okay. is the extension granted. So there would be time if you decided to recommend a continuance uh, to bring it back to um, the next planning commission or the following planning commission meeting after that. Um, we certainly have time built into the calendar to do that um, if the applicant is okay with that. And then um, another, we can extend the final occupancy as well. Um, so we have the authority to do that. Okay or a building official does. I'll Thank speak, you. Speak on his behalf. <laughs> Can I make one comment? Uh, please come to the podium. If you look up on the screen right here, uh -huh. uh, lower left-hand side, if you could zoom in right there. That is pretty much what it's going to look like. Other than it's going to be, it's going to be yeah. the same color. Other than it's going to have texture with the block. Yeah. So, it would look really nice, in my opinion. But from a distance, you won't hardly notice the you, texture. You wouldn't notice it at all right. from a distance. Other than it has some texture, which actually is. Go back nice. out. I'm going to point something out. Oh, unless Chris wants to go first. Okay. Um, for the commissioners, look at the lower picture, and you see the sprint sign. Mm -hmm. Come down to the ground and go to the left. Do you see that little veneer of stone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's basically what's going to be carried throughout that entire wall, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then basically the rest of the upper is going to be the same color as the top of the building. So it's all going to kind of blend in that way. I mean, it will, I mean, the sprint sign's going to pop. That's going to be one thing that's going to happen. But that's basically what we're going to look at. Mr. John. Yeah, I like that. It, it, it's fine. Um, the only concern, of course, is my brother's concern of peeling paint, but um, it, it, I'll, I'll go against him on that. Um, <laughs> as far as I, I like the, the stone that you have going around there, uh, 
but um, my recommendation would, would be to still have, well, if, if that's the rendering we would have, would we need a continuance? Or would we be able to move forward with this right now? I think Mr. Wad is proposing a continuance but has not made a motion. Oh, that's how, uh, that's how, okay. <laughs> uh, is this the time to do that, or is it? Uh, are we still if still in discussion? There is no further discussion. We can do that. Are we holding you back by waiting for a red uh, rendering? Well, I, I think we have the rendering right here. That's what I mean. I don't want to waste your guys' time. Um, it's. I think, like one of you guys pointed out. I mean, it's pretty much that right there. And then you zoom in, you can see it. Mm -hmm. you just, it's going to be all one color. The only thing has a little texture to it. So, I mean, I can pay the architect to do that same thing where we can just look at it and you know make a decision now I mean it seems to make sense to make a decision now Commissioner so, so it's unclear to me whether are you proposing just to paint the block or are you no, proposing we'll to add the add the stone veneer like the drawing and then paint the block above it correct add the stone and paint the block okay so if that's something the Commission's comfortable with somebody will need to make a motion with that language to adjust, I believe, recommendation one. In alternative, we can continue this uh, for another two to four weeks, or we can vote on it as presented by staff. Is there anybody opposed to doing that now? Commissioner John. Does staff uh, staff okay with them painting the building using that? What uh, are you against it? So our our recommendation is that they use one of the materials that is permitted within city code. Um, ultimately, it's you're the recommending body, um, and so it's your choice to if you agree with staff or not um, to make a recommendation to city council. Okay. Commissioner Roberts. Well, because it's city code, we really don't have a building to go reference and say, oh, this has been painted 10 years ago and it's still fine. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. What I can say is that recently, um, through the Planning Commission and City Council process, we have allowed painting of brick, um, which was prohibited at one time. Um, that is now permitted within our commercial zoning district. So um, there has been some flexibility in that regard, regarding painting of uh, material. Um, there is concern, though, um, with this or with a, any other product that you paint, that peeling can occur over time, and how we address that is through our code enforcement process. So. We don't like it to get to that point um, if we have you know, property owners that, that maintain their buildings, but sometimes we do have to go to that level. We don't want level. a band -aid. we want to fix. Right. Our tenants will let us know too, so mm. <laughs> especially Sprint. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not shy. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, sure what? I'll propose a motion. Thank you. Um, so I recommend that the uh, uh, that we recommended the city council approval of the PUD amendment to allow for exterior materials and landscaping deviations located at 1404 County Road 42 West with the following condition. And this is where I want to change the first uh, con condition. Um, the applicant shall apply for building permit with revised elevation for the east wall um, to, you know, more closely conform to the rendering that we just saw, and I'm not sure how to word that. Um, um, and what I'm trying to propose is adding the um, stone veneer at the base per the drawing and painting the um, uh, CMUs to match the stucco. Is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then the second and third uh, Conditions as they're as they're written. Can we make sure to s specify that it will be primed prior to painting? Primed. I don't know that we can. Dis I don't know that that's within our. Is that that's within our? It, it is on this particular issue. Oh, okay. 
however that gets worded. I, I don't yeah. know the best yeah. practices for yeah. Yeah. painting and priming this type of material, but I think the best practice should be used. Yeah, that's a good point. So keeping it worded as it is and then adding um, or the stone veneer at the bottom to align with what the height is on the front of the building mm -hmm. and then painting, uh, priming and painting um, with a matching color yeah. to match the, the front of the building. So I just amended your motion. Are you okay with that? I, I approve <laughs> okay. your amendment. <laughs> and are you okay? You can also get creative. Yep. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And the motion carries 4-1. That will go to the City Council next Tuesday, the 17th. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Thank you. Sure, John. Okay. okay, so thank you very much. We have made it through our public hearing items, and we are going to move on to uh, some discussions on uh, ordinances that we've looked at over the last year or two. Um, and I believe Ms. Garros is going to be leading these discussions. Um, so we're at item number six on the agenda, and this is a discussion for Planning Commission work plan item for conditional use permit and plan unit development, administrative review, one year check-in. And Ms. Garros. Thank you, uh, commissioners. Um, this is uh, an informal uh, type of um, discussion. Uh, there are several work plan items that um, the Planning Commission uh, came up with at the beginning of the year and the City Council uh, kind of blessed those and um, we're working through the majority of those. Um, I think these two, if they're not the last two, it's uh, very close uh, to that. So um, the first one here uh, is the conditional use permit and planned unit development process. Uh, basically what happened is the City Council wanted to take a look at um, economic competitiveness uh, in terms of how the city of Burnsville um, deals with development projects um, and our reviews and also our performance standards uh, as it relates to other, um, other jurisdictions. And they also took a look at not only our surrounding cities, but our market cities, um, which are communities like Plymouth and Minnetonka and uh, several others, St. Louis Park, cities that are somewhat closely similar to how Burnsville is. So they took a look at that and a number of changes were made. Um, some of them to uses where we made uses um, like restaurants that were formerly conditional uses. We made them permitted uses, um, those types of things. In this case, when it came to conditional use and um, PUDs, Burnsville has a lot of planned unit developments. Not all cities do that. Um, Planned unit developments are great. They allow flexibility, kind of in exchange for um, public benefit, as um, Ms. Dean has discussed. Um, they're great on the beginning part. Um, when it comes to the end, they can be very cumbersome. Uh, and we've found that over the years, uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword because, yeah, you get the deviations, but then if uses change or they want to do something else that seems reasonable, but it wasn't made part of that planned unit development, you have to go through this process of public hearings and uh, formally amend those. So what the Planning Commission took a look at is, uh, are there ways through a planned unit development and a conditional use permit um, to allow staff to have more administrative abilities um, so that uh, not so many applications, if you will, have to come through this formal process. Um, they wanted to make the ordinance uh, and our processes more business friendly, uh, if you will. We had six meetings total uh, with the Planning Commission and City Council, work sessions, regular meetings, uh, reviews, so there was uh, quite an extensive look at that. We had a consultant, uh, WSB, that did also some extensive uh, review and uh, presented that information back. 
uh, and what we came up with were a couple of things. With a planned unit development, what that is, um, I think for lack of a better way of saying it, it's uh, kind of a contract, if you will, for what the zoning district is. When you look in the city zoning ordinance, you see different zoning districts and there are different requirements and uses that you can have in those districts. Well, for a planned unit development, what that does is it basically takes the plans as part of the project, similar to what we just looked at, and those become the zoning district, if you will. So it's a combination of the plans that were approved and all of the conditions that go along um, that are approved with that PUD. And so that's the zoning district there. Um, the city attorney took a look and there are not a lot of opportunities for us to make changes to PUDs because it is a specific zoning district. Um, what we did do is uh, in the PUD, in the ordinance that ultimately gets adopted, zoning or changing the zone to a planned unit development, we were able to add a provision um, if, if Planning Commission Council feels it's appropriate that other types of uses in the underlying zoning district um, can still also be um, done uh, in addition to whatever the specific PUD is for. There have been a few of those uh, that we have been able to do. Um, in terms of how is it working today, um, this is really something that's going to be more useful for the older planned unit developments and as we go forward. Um, we've not had a number of them, um, you know, any that I can specify say, yeah, we adopted this ordinance, now we have 10 that worked and five that don't. So we really don't have that at this point. But we do know that some of the older plan unit developments were very specific. One I can think of uh, is on uh, Frontier Drive over by Valley Natural Foods. Uh, there was a, um, uh, two, there are two or three, I think three little office buildings. And when that was approved, um, there was a huge neighborhood involvement, um, big task force, uh, and the, what they did is they identified specifically small business uses could go in there. We recently had an application for PUD, this has been within the last couple of years, uh, to do a, um, a daycare nursery. And that ultimately, nope, that doesn't mean small business. So that use, I mean, it, it wasn't allowed for other reasons, parking and whatnot. But that just gives you the, kind of the idea that we have to research every planned unit development and every conditional use permit and see what exactly was approved. So this, we do believe, will be helpful um, in the future, uh, but we don't have any specific numbers on it's, it's done these things to this point. Um, with regard to, uh, oops, sorry about that, with regard to conditional use permits, um, we have, again, that is something that in the ordinance under each zone, there are uses that are permitted, meaning you can basically just come in with a building permit and do those. There are accessory ones, meaning that as long as it's a subset or a subsidiary, if you will, to the principal use, you can do it, and then there are conditional uses. And when an ordinance is set up, um, cities will take a look at and they'll say, you know, these types of uses we think generally fit in this zone, but they may have some, um, there may be some particular things that we should take a look at uh, in making sure that they won't have um, adverse impacts to adjacent properties and what. So things like um, churches are typically a conditional use in residential. It's a big facility, um, it's not a single family home, and it's just the differences. You take a look at traffic and noise and, and certain parameters. So what we did is um, we were able to um, change some of the conditional uses to make them permitted uses, and I think that that has been um, beneficial. Um, we have a couple of restaurants that would have been conditional use permits, and now basically they can just uh, open, if you will, as long as they meet building permit criteria. So with that, um, from a staff recommendation, we believe that the ordinances um, are still appropriate and valid. Um, we don't think that there needs to be changes made to those at this point in time. 
um, and it's something that really is, uh, it's been a year since they've been adopted, so um, a lot of times the Planning Commission will like to see them come back in a year just to see kind of how things are working, uh, if there are any modifications that need to be made. And in this case, um, staff believes that uh, they will work well, um, you know, in the future as we go along dealing with all of these planned unit developments. Um, and we don't believe that there is a need to further modify those. But it's a discussion item. It's on your planning commission work plan. And that's why we're here. If you feel differently, uh, to let us know. And we will proceed uh, with the direction that you provide to us. Thank you, Ms. Thank Garrus. You. Mr. John. So I actually was watching those meetings from 2017. That's what made me late, believe it or not. Uh, and it was, it was interesting. Uh, Commissioner Binky was, was talking about how he didn't even like the 10% on the building extensions. Or yes. Had we anything come in um, for increased size of building or anything that never came forward to the city council or to the planning commission because it fell underneath the 30 percent we haven't yet okay. but it's not just because it's 30 percent it's because there are other other parts of the code that weren't necessarily met or close to being met but we do believe um, again that 30 percent does give more flexibility um, it's just that if it's a conditional use permit or a PUD chances are there were other deviations other than just that size standard, um, but we do believe that it was a good uh, a good move and will be beneficial in the future. So, if if there's other deviations that require it to go before the commissions, can those uh, <coughs> building extensions be brought up, or is that not necessarily the case? If if you have the, you know, if if you're able to use the CUP rather than the PUD. Um, the it would need to come back because it's that zoning district okay. so to consider something else um, but if it's just an addition we've had a couple of additions that have come close but they have maybe just been um, a little bit more than 30 percent um, but it's come close um, I don't know if Regina or Sarah if you have any comments or um, well, so the vet clinic from April was, was close when they originally came in for their expansion before it, they even have formally applied for their CUP amendment, but they also had other factors involved, such as that they were in a non-conforming use, and so there was a variance in, incorporated into that request as well. And they ended up expanding larger than they had originally intended as well. So come close, but nothing exactly. We've had much more... Um, Results from the uses that used to be conditional than we or conditional than with anything else. Ms. Giros, um, say you had something that met this these new um, staff approval criteria, but there were still concerns that you had, and it didn't necessarily have any other issues. Would you still bring that to the commission? Or would you use the 30% or any of these other uh, new guidelines as a yes or a no type of decision? Um, we would really follow um, what the actual ordinance language is and the approval language. Um, and if it's something that we feel is not, you know, within that spirit and intent, um, we will usually um, err to bringing it before Planning Commission and Council as opposed to having staff approve something that... You know, it's like, well, I don't really think that that was appropriate. Sure. So that's usually how we, we try to do things. We would rather rather bring them forward and have you have the opportunity to review it, let the public have their uh, input, and and uh, go from that point. Well, thank you for that. Uh, any other comments from the commissioners? Do you want to see this again in a year? I don't know. I would look at your guidance on this, do you think it's something that we actually would need to see? I mean, are we just going to review the same thing we're doing today? It would be basically the same yeah. same type of thing. I mean, I don't know how it could change back. that much more. I mean, Yeah, I think it's going to be an incremental, you know, type of thing that will help. But, you know, yeah. it's not a big, like, now all of a sudden, wow, we've got 20 or 30 of these. That's great. Uh, <laughs> I wish we did. Um, but, uh, but unfortunately, um, well, I don't with those processes, right. you know, there's some will leave. I don't but, see it. 
ever as staff trying to sneak it under the radar. It's just let's move things along. And right. yeah. I mean, we save a lot of people's time if we're able to do that then exactly. and not have yeah. them come in front of the commission. And that was the purpose for most of that. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't believe we need a motion, but nope. are, we, are we comfortable with recommending that we continue moving forward and that we'll have ad hoc updates as necessary, as yes. needed. Everybody comfortable with that? Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. If so, now, yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we could have a motion, we just don't need That's one. That's right, yeah, it's, it's totally up to you. This is your work plan, yeah. so. <laughs> All right, so let's go on to the next item, which is uh, discussion planning commission work plan item for annual solar ordinance review. Now this one has had changes. Um, it did have quite an extensive review. Um, the ordinance before our current ordinance was basically, yes, you can do solar. And that was about all there was. There wasn't really much of anything in the ordinance. Uh, so we did a pretty extensive study looking at both um, local and national um, trends and standards and performance criteria. And also, I mean, solar is just, it's booming and it has been for the past several years. Uh, there are some tax incentives and uh, rebate programs and now even the power companies are, are involved with it. So uh, it's something that definitely, uh, I think, um, is uh, something that's good to have. We have modified the ordinance a couple of times based on uh, some tweaks uh, for some changes, and I think those were good changes. Um, what we have, uh, basically, there are a couple of things, uh, just for your uh, general knowledge, um, there are communities that allow solar as a principal use, if you will. Those would be the solar gardens, you know, the larger solar farms, solar gardens, those types of things. When um, Burnsville, when we were going through the ordinance process, uh, the city council and planning commission felt that we are really a fully developed community. And even the areas that aren't developed yet, like that are in the Minnesota River Quadrant, they do have planned unit development approvals on them. So there are concepts as to how they will develop. So um, the feeling was that as a principal use, um, they didn't feel that that was something for the city of Burnsville. But they did recognize that we do have a lot of different rooftops, lots of different buildings out there, and there's an opportunity to do a larger scale um, accessory type solar development. So that's really where they felt that the um, that the ordinance should come from. So then we took a look at these are accessory type uses. Uh, pretty much if it's building integrated, um, that could be anything from like a solar awning um, or any type of solar, basically if you can't see it or it looks like it's part of a building um, exterior material. There are some really uh, kind of neat products that are out there that those you could do. Um, do those just with a building permit. There are some other um, standards that they wanted to take a look at for um, like panels, solar panels. Um, that's the more traditional um, thing that's out there. Um, they're coming up with some really great uh, solar panels and things that just, they don't look like silver at all. Uh, but that's a little costly and that's not really what's in the incentives programs at this point. So um, we did modify the ordinance to remove some standards requiring, um, they wanted at first to have the panels, not so much the panels themselves, but anything surrounding the panel or equipment, um, depending on if you have a, um, a heat exchanger or if you have um, you know, water involved. There are different processes for different types of applications. Uh, so they wanted them to have colors that match the roof, for example. And city council ended up taking that out. Uh, really the only thing that is still in there deals with if there's a glare situation that becomes kind of a nuisance, you know, then we may need to look at it. It has not been an issue so far uh, in all the applications that we've done. And then we also had another um, issue with um, the panel arrays. They were trying to get to the design when you're putting these on the rooftops. And more so like when you're dealing with single family neighborhoods, 
they didn't want to have, you know, panels just all over the place, so they tried to craft some language. Uh, and we put in there that the panel rays need to try to match the shape and proportion of the roof that they're on. That was very difficult um, to administer. And also what happened is um, triangular panels, when the ordinance was first put together, were readily available. Um, but the manufacturer stopped making them. So when you have like a hip roof, for example, you no longer have that opportunity for those triangular panels. Mm -hmm. So trying to meet shape and proportion, the <laughs> Planning Commission and Council just thought, you know, let's, let's take that out. And um, so they did. And I think that uh, the ordinance has worked well since. We haven't had any issues uh, that have come up. Uh, these are the number of permits um, that we've had since the ordinance went into effect in 2016. And the 2019 figure isn't done yet. We still have some other ones. I'm sure it'll be coming in. But you can see it, it has been uh, increasing. We have a lot of larger solar installations. Um, school district buildings, they've been adding uh, a lot of solar panels, uh, and um, the, uh, I think a lot of the industrial um, buildings too, especially in the Lark Industrial Park north of 13, have been doing this, and it, it's just is something that makes sense to help them uh, reduce their costs of operation. The, um, the next part of this is there is an organization called Soul Smart, and um, they are a group that has been put together, and they are working with the Metropolitan Council, working with local communities. Um, actually, this is part of a federal program uh, trying to make solar um, as easy and least expensive uh, as possible, and trying to really get at the regulatory aspects of it in the permitting because that tends to be where the bog comes down, you know, kind of slowing things down for solar. Uh, so what they have done is they have a series of recommendations and uh, criteria that they've looked at uh, nationwide and they actually reviewed our ordinance. We have a local sustainability uh, team uh, made up of staff members from different departments and we try to look at all sorts of different opportunities for um, sustainable resources, etc. The council did uh, adopt a program and we participate in a program where we do get part of our energy resources through um, solar farms, but they're actually located in other communities. And that is, uh, it's a consortium that also involves the Metropolitan Politan Council that set those up. So we do that. Um, in addition to that, Soul Smart had some uh, recommendations or things for the city to consider. So um, we thought that this would be good to bring to the Planning Commission um, because you do this annual review of this ordinance uh, in addition to sustainability and parks and natural resources and those types of things. So I had indicated um, what the uh, kind of what their recommendations were in this table and um, a little bit in terms of the staff considerations and uh, what um, what uh, we thought and, and how we use the ordinance. And we used uh, their examples and we put together the uh, brochure uh, and some of the checklists that were in your packet that we would put on our website. Um, and the building official is taking a look at them and they're pretty much good to go. Again, kind of self-help, mostly for residential, um, but really for anyone looking to do a solar installation. So. So this was included, um, I think, based on our um, review of the ordinance. Um, things are going well um, with the ordinance. Uh, it is a constantly changing technology, uh, and I think that it is a, a good idea to um, keep keep the ordinance on for your work plan to take a look at. Maybe in a few years, you know, if we have a few years in a row and there isn't anything, um, you could consider taking it off, but. Our recommendation is to uh, to continue to uh, bring it back for your review and just update you on what's happening uh, in that field. And with that, thank you very discussion. much. Any dialogue? Can we go back a couple slides sure. to the? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just doing the thing. Here. Mr. Anderson, <laughs> uh, I just had a quick question. I was kind of curious. Oh, yeah. What uh, is considered to be a solar farm? Is it just the size of the land? Is it like I mean, like as an example. 
uh, Brunswick Center said we want to cover the whole roof with, with solar. Yep. That's a huge area, but since it's on a, a already a very large building, is that not going to be an issue? The difference really is that um, the solar array becomes the principal use of the property, okay. so there isn't anything else there. It's just the solar array. Okay. Whereas our ordinance is set up so that you can do, you know, you can do these things on these larger buildings, um, but it's not the principal use okay. of the property. Makes sense. Um, so that that's where that comes into play. Perfect. Mr. Roberts. Yeah, I would think being a city that's developed like we are, we don't have that type of area yeah, anyway. Yeah. Can you go a couple slides back? This is just a simple question, but right there. Okay. There's no zeros added onto these or nothing. That's nine. Yep. Okay. That's what it is. Number of permits. <laughs> I was looking at the permit numbers. I'm wondering, is that going to be times whatever? But that's what we're looking at. Okay, so we're not really booming. I know the spectrum of solar is big. Yep. But for right now, we're not really. Okay. No, and a lot of it really relates to, I think, um, the, the different um, tax incentives uh, that are available. And a lot of those are actually ending here, um, you know, in the next year or so. So... You know, we'll see if that continues. Um, solar energy is a big business now, and um, I think it will continue. Um, but yeah, the the number of permits we really don't have all that all that okay. many. Commissioner John. Yeah, I was at the state fair. We we saw a lot of. Um, uh, they had like the eco area, and the, I mean it's becoming a big thing. And if you actually look in 2017, it was three <clears throat> residential, and it tripled in 2018, and. We're not done with 2019 yet, so I would agree it's going to be a bigger thing, and it's a good thing really to to move. It's forward a resource with. that's out there that you right. know is just waiting to be captured. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think keeping up to date on that is a great idea, and to keep moving forward. That's my recommendation anyway. Ms. Carroll, mm -hmm. so some of the examples that um, were in our background were some really creative uses of solar panels. Um, in some of the pictures, just in the, I'm guessing we talked about this last year, but can somebody completely el eliminate their electric bill by putting solar panels on their house? And can they actually capture enough electricity to then sell that back into the uh, electrical grid? Yeah, that is possible. We have, um, we are at the same um latitude as Germany. Germany is a leader, one of the most progressive um, nations involved in that. And yeah, that is totally possible. Interesting. I think it's great that the city has a sustainability team. Can they come next year when we discuss this? Yes. Event? That would be wonderful. Can they come? Regina's on there. I remember. Yes. <laughs> yes, we can. Actually, the city has been very successful. We've replaced um, all sorts of lighting with the uh, LED lighting. Um, we have uh, one of the only green roofs is on a city facility. It's on the city water, uh, water plant site. Um, we do, I mean, they have done all sorts of analysis and um, everything from taking a look at our uh, vehicles. A couple of years ago, we went to uh, starting to use uh, Prius and hybrid vehicles. Uh, we just installed um, the electric, vehicle electric charging, charging stations. stations. There's two in Heart of the City. Yeah. Yep, on city facilities. So um, it's a progressive group, and uh, really it's, uh, if you go to the website and just click on the sustainability tab, they have a, a little um, dashboard that they show, and it's pretty amazing um, the money that has been saved. One of the biggest things is because of the recycling of the uh, water supply down at the um, KMM quarry. We save just a ton of money, uh, and that's something that, that was totally wasted. That was all just being pumped out to the river, and uh, being able to reuse that for both City of Savage and Burnsville. Um, just pretty amazing stuff. So you um, said, as far as solar goes, the city is, is tapping into other communities' solar grids. Do we have any solar assets ourselves right now? Um, we well, we have. There are there is a lot of solar assets. Um, when we did the twenty forty comp plan, one of the things that we needed to do was to include a solar map, 
And there's actually a resource that you can get. Um, it was developed by the University of Minnesota. You can look up your own home and see what your solar capacity is. Um, it, it's really a cool thing. And there is a lot of untapped capacity here. I think as the technology um, continues, a lot of people don't like the look of the panels. Um, but this new stuff that's coming out for these solar um, uh, building materials, roofing, um, it looks great. I mean, it looks like an architectural, you know, um, uh, an architectural shingle, for example. Uh, they're already available, and those prices, as they start coming down, I believe that people are really going to be using those quite a bit. Commercial. Any other comments? We'd like to see this in here, I take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good, good one to revisit. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And we'll uh, hope to see some more of the sustainability sustainability <laughs> team, <laughs> or at least maybe a picture, so they don't have to come in in the evening. <laughs> sustainability man, too. Yes. Really? Watch on BCTV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. YouTube. Wow. I'm gonna find him. <laughs> Could you come up with that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Marty come up with that? Yes. Marty. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. maybe. He, who knows he's who he is? He's a sustainability man. Yeah, you know, we don't know for sure. He wears masks, so you can't tell. No. Hmm. <laughs> the sustainability man have a mustache. <laughs> 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 all right. So thank you very much, Miss Garros. And uh, with that, we will move to any updates that staff has. So, uh, your next meeting will be September twenty. Third, I believe, um, and we're passing out the draft agenda right now for that meeting. So far, there are two, two items that will be heard that evening. And then as far as the Lake Marion Trail, uh, that actually will be going to City Council in October. Uh, they, uh, it does need to go to the Parks and Natural Resource Commission first, and they just weren't quite ready to have that done. So um, we don't anticipate any changes from what uh, Planning Commission saw, but your recommendations will go, you know, as you, uh, as you um, provided them, and uh, it's just the council meetings delayed uh, for about a month and a half. I don't remember if we talked about it two weeks ago, but they were planning if they got approval this would be developed next year or built yep. next year yep. okay so there's time on that exactly okay yep that's it from Any our side updates from the commission no mm. all right well i move to adjourn <laughs> it's eight four i'll second that <laughs> <laughs> i guess we'll hold a vote all those in favor aye, aye. aye. all those opposed and the meeting's adjourned at 8.41.